Now, have you ever wondered if there was a quicker and easier way to calculate the total yield of ATP from the beta oxidation of fatty acids? A robust formula that was so simple that you could calculate the ATP yield in seconds rather than minutes. One that for some of you would not even require a calculator. Well, in this episode, I will be presenting not one but two simple mathematical formulae that do exactly that. Before I present them, I need to quickly go over ATP equivalents of both NADH and FADH2. Now, some of the more modern, higher-level biochemistry textbooks use 2.5 ATPs per NADH and 1.5 ATPs per FADH2. Now, if this is what you have been taught during your biochemistry lectures, then use the following mathematical formula. Open brackets, 7 times C, close brackets, minus 6. For calculating the ATP yield for even-numbered saturated fatty acids, where the letter C represents the number of carbons within the saturated fatty acid. If, on the other hand, you have been taught that the ATP equivalents for NADH and FADH2 are 3 and 2, these are the rounded-up figures which you might come across in textbooks that teach biochemistry at an introductory or lower level. If this happens to be what you have been taught, then use the following formula. Open brackets, 8.5, multiplied by C, close brackets, minus 7. As with the previous formula, the letter C represents the number of carbons within the saturated fatty acid. Let us now look at an example of how to use these formulae for a 10-carbon fatty acid such as capric acid found in goat's milk. Using the first formula would generate 7 times 10 minus 6, which equals 64 ATPs, while the second formula would generate 8.5 multiplied by 10 minus 7, which would give you 78 ATPs. Recall how the first formula assumes an ATP equivalence of 2.5 ATPs per NADH and 1.5 ATPs per FADH2. While the second formula assumes the rounded up version of these numbers, i.e. 3 ATPs for NADH and 2 ATPs for FADH2. Note also how the condensed structural formula is used in this example. While I have been kind enough to tell you that the fatty acid has 10 carbons in total, examination questions might not be this helpful. This means that you need to familiarize yourself with how to count the total number of carbons in such examples. We have one carbon from the CH3, eight carbons from the eight CH2 units within the brackets, and finally one carbon from the COOH functional group. This gives a total of 10 carbons. Let us now finish off with two summary tables that utilize each of these formulae for calculating the ATP yield from saturated even-numbered fatty acids. Here is the first table that uses the first formula. Finally, here is the second table that uses the second formula. You will notice from these tables that the number of ATPs produced goes up in accordance with the length of the carbon chain. In fact, if you were to calculate the number of ATPs per gram of fatty acid, you would quickly notice that longer chain fatty acids produce more ATP per gram than medium or short chain fatty acids. Now, if you're interested, I'll be showing you how to calculate this in a future episode. In my next episode, however, I'll be showing you how to derive the two formulae by summarizing the key steps involved in the beta oxidation of even-numbered fatty acids, while also taking into account fatty acid activation. So please subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when this is released. Finally, if you found this to be useful, please click like. Thank you for listening.